Hey guys, welcome to a new playthrough, a new deep playthrough of Skyrim. Actually one of my favorite games of all time. With also one of the coolest musical scores of all time. Just listen to it in the background, pretty bombastic. Um, of course I am like 8 years late. I think it came out in 2011 or something. Uh, November 11, 2011 if I'm not mistaken. I could be making that up, just uh, check it out on Google, I'm not sure, but I think it is the case. <coughs> Alright, I'm getting into the Skyrim mood with the music. One sec, good for me to get into the mood of the fantasy land on the Isle of Skyrim. <laughs> Super cool. This music really doesn't get old quick. Dovahkiin. The dragon tongue. Anyways, I am way late to the party. That had multiple reasons. I got the game um, when it came out immediately and I actually actually spent years modding the game and actually not playing it because modding it I really wanted when it just came out it was pretty graphical it was it's an amazing world but I, I was like there's so much more that can be done and on Skyrim Nexus so many mods came out that it really was like almost an addiction like ramming uh, the, all those uh, mods in one major uh, mod list uh, having also learned how to mod with uh, test 5 edit and stuff um, Then other games came out. I parked it a bit and but I always kept on coming back to Skyrim Just like I do now nine or eight years after release. It's still I'm still drawn to the game Also, of course, because I really didn't finish the, the main campaign um, Anyways, uh, then Skyrim special edition came out which made Lots of mods redundant, like uh, weather mods, uh, lightning mods, um, like reshade, you didn't need it anymore. Um, I cannot quickly think of uh, texture mods, uh, think of that many now, but uh, actually Skyrim Special Edition was, was great in my book. Only the um, saturation was way uh, over the top in my book. That whole color tone changed from a harsh, barren um, winterland <coughs> to almost like uh, a tropical island uh, sky. Like a warmth, bluish <coughs> sky, which totally, in my book, didn't fit with the, 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 the barren tundras of uh, Skyrim. So I actually created my own mod. That is one uh, the, I will be going into this playthrough without a lot of mods, except my own, which is called No More Mario Sky, and which uh, reinstates all the um, color tones, uh, the color palette with the saturation and the brightness, etc., from the original Skyrim. So you have the, the best of both worlds. You have the same art design, uh, but also all the graphical enhancement, higher resolution texture, better shadows, better water quality, uh, death of fields, uh, what have you not, all the graphical improvements that they introduced with uh, Skyrim Special Edition, you have that as well. So I'm really happy with that. So uh, the mod uh, No More Mario Sky for the color palette, I will do um, enhanced blood textures, which uh, gives the a bit more bloody game, a bit more gruesome. And I have open faced guard helmets because yeah, the default helmets are pretty unimmersive. They are almost like you don't really see the eyes um, uh, of the, the the guards. So open faced, I find uh, arm is more cool. So that is about the mods. We'll be playing on the highest difficulty level. Not even sure what it's called. Um, I think survival or something. There are some survival elements in that uh, Bethesda took over from. Um, <coughs> campfire mod um, from man it all comes back to me now because starting this game was really like uh, in the spur of the moment I really thought of the game and I was like man I 
<coughs> I have to get back in Skyrim and I was like I can just as well make a playthrough of it but it was uh, the survival elements were taken over from um, Frostfall the mods by I forgot his name uh, I won't come up with Chesco Frostfall and Campfire that uh, was the inspiration I guess for Bethesda to also introduce some survival elements in the hardest difficulty level I will not do uh, any fast travel <coughs> uh, I will not um, I have no hut whatsoever for the fullest uh, immersive experience uh, possible and that's about it all the graphics are maxed out even uh, more than maxed out I tweaked some uh, the, the, the detailed distance settings and stuff like that um, so it's it's yeah as good as it gets uh, in Skyrim special edition and what was oh yeah there's one thing i have to admit i'm not starting all over i actually um i think it was a year ago already did quite some um uh missions or uh how do you call it quests in skyrim special edition and i will just continue from there because i ma mainly did side quests i didn't really get that far in the main quest line and that's uh, of course the objective of this playthrough is getting also through the side quest but also the main quest so let's boot up the game um, let's load it because this is I think where I was and that was yeah now it's not a year almost a year ago November 24th 2018 here we go guys Man, pretty amazing that such an old game still has a, a pool. Like, that it's it's such a cool world to just mess about in. Anyways, um, we'll be doing it in 45 minute episodes, like most of my non-HDR uh, uploads. HDR often are way bigger file sizes and sometimes the um, episodes need to be a bit shorter because youtube still cannot handle really big file sizes it doesn't process it to uh, 4k by the way i will be doing 60 fps 4k <coughs> and i will be uh, also for me i have to actually check what i already did and didn't do so these are some small jobs Berg Ah, no, let's just go all the way from down. I actually did quite a lot, goddammit. But there's still a lot to do. This is um, the start of the game. There are also, of course, a lot of just tombs in here, like uh, crypts or uh, caves. I did do the main quest line, I think, from the... Um yeah, in, in White Run, you have that uh, faction. The, uh, I will see it here, wait. Um, Innocent Lost Skrelloc. Yeah, she was, uh, she had like this orphanage and she was mistreating the children. So I had to take some action. There was indeed a serial killer in Windhelm. The Dark Brotherhood. I actually uh, didn't do that quest line because I don't want to be a cold blooded assassin i just killed all of them instead this is the dark brotherhood is an assassin's uh, faction the forsworn all right don't remember that one really first lesson the college of winterhold ah yeah i did do the college of winterhold a bit and the house of horrors night to remember it's pretty funny i think um the dragonborn he just woke up with a big hangover didn't know what uh what he did in the previous night and that uh, is a pretty fun uh <coughs> quest that i unfortunately already did so don't be will be doing it again uh the black star i have it that is for capturing souls when you kill that um, you need souls to um where do you need it for? Uh, oh yeah, to upgrade uh, enchanted uh, items or weapons. And normally you have to put them in like uh, a soul gem. 
and they get full and they get destroyed after usage and the black star you can indefinitely store uh so in it in in it uh, yeah the staff of magnus not even sure uh, what that was i actually already joined the legion i think maybe i'm now currently in the legion and Yeah, jeez, I did a lot. Battle for Windhelm. Man, I did quite some uh, stuff already. The Barge College in Solitude. That's where we are now, I guess. We are in Solitude. And attempt the burning of King Olaf. All right. Ah, I remember something from that now. Brynjolf is, I think, the... The... Is that the Dark Brotherhood? Which ones... Which faction was the... Um, yeah, the Dark Brotherhood. That is the... Um, Assassins, but Brynjolf, he is up in Riften. He is actually also from a brotherhood, but that's more of thieves. The other thieves guild, that's it, I guess it's called. <coughs> um, all right. A lot of jobs. Apparently, I stole quite some stuff already. And the only thing uh, I'm wondering about is there was also this faction in White Run. I think I also completed that quest line. It was a bit at the beginning. I'm trying to find it. It was not the Legion, because you have two factions in their civil war: the Stormcloaks versus the uh, Imperials. And I think the Legion quest line is when you pick a side. I picked the uh, the Imperials. And I already completed that. But before that, I think I did that other section. One second. Just also for me to get back into this game. It's such a huge game. The Silver Hand, I think. Silver Hand are like vampires. Trouble. Maybe I didn't do that quest still. One second, I'm quickly running through it. Sorry, this is of course super boring, but yeah, you can uh, skip ahead. I'm just really curious. The Imperial Legion. I've decided to join the Imperial Legion in its fights to preserve the Empire. That's what I joined. And that were some fights against the Stormcloaks. All right. Barge College, that's I think where I'm now. This is the the Thieves Guild, Brynjolf. These are all those little uh, jobs. Yeah, these are all jobs. But the tables have unexpectedly turned a mercer fray has been revealed as gallus the skiller i now find myself in carlias care after mercer tried to murder me claiming i'd outlast my usefulness by witnessing their conversation 
I've also discovered that Mercer, Gallus, and Carlia were members of some sort of group calling themselves the Nightingales, guardians in service to the goddess Nocturnal. What they're protecting or what this has to do with the guild is still a mystery to me. Alright, whatever. Mm. The lexicon to Avangsel, that's like the... Um, Yeah, that's like the, there's a kind of affection with robot mechanics, uh, a bit of steampunk kind of uh, stuff. These are all jobs, and that's where I was. So I didn't do that section of the uh, faction in White Run. That's one second. I want to remember the name of that section, and I can't come up with it, so I'm googling it. And that is White Run Faction. Oh man, my phone is so annoying. White Run Faction. I think it are the companions indeed. The companions. And apparently I still didn't do it. After joining the companions. Whatever it says, uh, after joining the companions, if the law is broken in White Run and the guards react negatively, members of the companions will leap to blah blah blah. Whatever. But uh, so that was yeah, a faction. I thought I already a quest I uh, completed, but apparently not. <coughs> the quests we now have open are the Dainty Sloat. That's like a boat here in near solitude, I guess. Eriker has been cheated by Wolf, captain of a trader vessel named the Dante Sloat, in order to frame Wolf for a crime he didn't commit. Eriker is requesting that a substance called Belmora Blue be stashed on board in the captain's food locker. All right, we can do that. Trinity restored. Carlia has indicated Brynjolf and I are to meet her at an old standing stone just outside the Southwest Gate of Rhythm. Her motivation for doing so are mysterious, but I suspect it has something to do with the Nightingales. That's, I think, uh, Following up on the thief's quest, uh, there's apparently a new quest line with those nightingales starting there uh, with Beer and Jurel from Carlia. No stone unturned. The unusual gem has turned out to be one of 24 stones of Berenzaia. According to Vex, they have little value unless the set is complete. I already have 16. Man, I've quite a lot. Then we have the Horn of Jurgen Windcaller. I think this is the main quest line. Ah, by the way, also the two DLCs, Dragonborn and Dawnguard, I didn't touch at all yet, so can do that as well. But this is the, the main uh, questline. After demonstrating my ability to learn words of power and to shout, the Greybeard Arn Gear sent me on a final trial, retrieving the Horn of Jürgen Windcaller from his tomb in Oostengraf. Unfortunately, when I reached the tomb, I found that someone had replaced the Horn of Jürgen Windcaller with a note asking me to meet them in the Sleeping Giant Inn in River Roots. All right, do we have to do that? The <coughs> the two DLCs, Dragonborn and Dawnguard, I will do all uh, at the end. And then the miscellaneous missions, find 20 Nightshades, uh, find 20 Nern Roots, speak with Constance Michelle about adoption. Yeah, you can also adopt children and build uh, houses. Also those DLCs, you have the Dawnguard DLC and Dragonborn, which are quest-like uh, DLCs. But you also have a third DLC, which enables the building of your own house and customize it. And I think in that DLC also the uh, option to adopt children uh, became available, but I'm not really sure whether I will do that. I really feel more of like a lone 
um, yeah, a knight or whatever you want to call him, adventurer. Uh, and not really a family man in Skyrim, but maybe I will. Then we have the Jarl of Valkyrie, all the, the regions or the, the counties or whatever you uh, can call them, uh, have their own Jarl and they uh, also have, I think, uh, their own little quest lines. And that uh, also uh, uh, gives you, if you complete them, you can have like the option to buy a house or uh, get some other reward from the Jarl or some privileges. Uh, talk to the companion leaders for work. Ah, here it's actually mentioned. Uh, this is the companion quest line that I, I think I did in an earlier playthrough or I, I didn't I never really recorded the playthrough, but I did play the game, of course, a bit uh, on and off. And I do remember doing something from the companions, but apparently that was not in this uh, game save. Anyways, for now, let's just do that denty slot uh, thing. We have to acquire Balmora Blue. Let's see where that is on the map. This is the... Um, ah, there's a warehouse, apparently. And this is the ship, I guess. But first we have to get that Balmora Blue. Oh, by the way, this is the current location. Um, local map. Nope. And let's get back to the journal. Um, yeah, that's about it. Let's let's just see where we can get Belmora Blue. I would uh, show you the uh, menu working. It's pretty simple. You have the skills. Ah. And you can level up a lot of attributes. Your your skill level um, increases by using uh, a certain ability or by, by performing an activity. And then once you have uh, sufficient uh, um, uh, experience, you get like a skill point and you can use it in these trees. For instance, here, uh, uh, dual casting an alteration spell overcharges the effect into a more powerful version. Uh, I did quite some uh, leveling up and enchanting. Smithing, I did quite a lot. Uh, heavy armor, a bit. Blocking, also quite a lot. Two-handed, a bit uh, less. So, one-handed more. Archery, I'm pretty good at. It maxes out, I think, at 100. And uh, when you have uh, certain things all maxed, you can reset all your skill points and just uh, start to uh, uh, totally start over with uh, distributing them among the um, uh, skill trees uh, but for now let's just leave it light armor sneak i'm all, all i always try to be a bit sneaky but apparently i really didn't level this one up yet a lot um yeah that's a bit weird it surprises me <coughs> Lock picking, I'm pretty good at that. And a 98 out of 100. Pickpocket, a bit good. Speech, always handy for to get some uh, more uh, dialogue options. I'm pretty good at it, but I didn't unlock any uh, yeah skill levels yet. Alchemy, trying to do some uh, uh, potions like poisons or. Um, what have you more? Yeah, potions to, to give some the defensive abilities and curing abilities and stuff. Illusion, I'm not really doing a lot with that. Maybe I could do something. Conjuration, uh, summoning creatures. Also don't do that a lot. Destruction, like fire, ice, uh, and lightning uh, spells. I do like those. Restoration, healing yourself, not really into that. Alteration, um, water breaching, ma ma magical shields, paralysis. D not really into that one. Enchanting, I was into smithing. So this is the skill tree. Oh, then you have magic. Um, these are the uh, spells I can use. Uh, you have alteration, like you can, uh, for instance, turn iron into silver. Or uh, the armor rating, you can your own armor rating, you can increase. You have illusion, you can uh, calm enemies 
or you can have uh, allies have uh, uh, additional courage or you can make people totally lose it and attack anything destruction spells it's for mostly the lightning spells uh, fire spells or ice spells and then you have several variations on it like uh, a, a, an ice spike or an ice uh, bolt or like a, a flame cloak that uh, damages nearby uh, enemies then we have conjuration that is yeah conjure like mystical uh, weapons magical weapons or like uh, creatures like an atronach a frost or a flame atronach or a zombie or reanimate the course uh, corpse so you're really like more of like a yeah, a bit of a witch, actually. Revenant, Revenant. Reanimate a powerful dead body to fight for you for 60 seconds. Restoration, that's more like healing. Um, yeah, uh, actually that and increasing your, your armor rating. Um, then we have shouts. Besides these spells, you also have shouts as the Dragonborn. Those are pretty uh, uh, powerful and also have like this... Uh, recharge time uh, and you have to find walls dragon walls after mostly defeating a boss enemy you can uh, read uh, uh, ancient dragon tongue on the wall and that then uh, with that you can unlock uh, a new shout and to be able to unlock it you also need dragon bones and you get those or dragon souls by defeating actual actual dragons in the world um, I actually, if I'm looking at it, I already have a lot of shouts. Um, pretty many shouts uh, available, but I think there it's not like all in here in this menu are all the ones in the game. I think the thing is, I read the wall for Dismay in this arm and for Aura Whisper. But I didn't actually uh, unlock it with a Dragon Soul. I have one Dragon Soul. I could unlock one. We can actually just as well do it now. You're, but you can also, I think, uh, use those Dragon Souls to already uh, to upgrade already unlocked shouts. For you have three levels for each shout. So I could, of course, unlock this one. But I can also spend that Dragon Soul unlocking a shout that is more. Uh, to my tasting uh, because yeah this makes weak enemies flee yeah this shout as you rip the weapons from an opponent's craft that's actually a pretty cool one this arm maybe I will uh, use that one or unlock that one your vows is not a shout but a whisper revealing the life sources of any and all I don't really care for those I find that just also in games like stealth games where you suddenly have x-ray vision and can uh, uh looked through walls i really find that retarded it's almost like a cheat engine that's the same as with this like revealing life forces of any and all don't really uh, care for that one but this one this arm is pretty cool let's unlock it thank you very much so that are the shouts um yeah we will go through it uh later or yeah we can just do it uh, now it's already a boring episode anyways not much uh, gameplay, but uh, good to get into it. We have uh, the beast will come and help you. This one is not unlocked. It's uh, like revealing the life forces. Um, you cannot be harmed. Become ethereal. Disarm. That's uh, rip the weapon from your enemy. Dismay. People will uh, flee. Brain vitality. Now nah, that's uh, self-explaining. Elemental fury. You uh, move super quickly when hitting your enemy. <laughs> so your your damage per second is uh, like to the through the roofs fire breath pretty self-explanatory frost breath same ice form your thumb freezes an opponent solid that's actually pretty handy you can really also boss level entities you can simply uh, uh, yeah freeze them uh, 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 solid kind piece soothing to wild beasts uh, who lose their desire to fight you pretty handy if you're out in the wild 
March for death. Uh, this uh, decreases your enemy's armor rating and life force. Slow time. This is like uh, Alan Wake uh, slow motion. Uh, it actually stands still time. Uh, that can be pretty handy if you're trying to do uh, uh, a difficult uh, bow and arrow shot. Throw voice. Um, it, I think it distracts enemies. The thumb is hurt, but it's source unknown, fooling those into seeking it out. I actually fully upgraded that one. It also amazes me. There's not really something for me to upgrade a shout like this, but apparently I did. Um, it can be handy. I also don't really remember using it a lot, but I will so going forward just to distract them and then hit them with the dagger in the back like the hero that I am. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, unrelenting force. That's one of the, the most common shouts. It's just like uh, a push uh, forward, uh, tumbling over anything in your path. And whirlwind sprint. That is uh, also handy. You you really for a second or two you uh, yeah almost move with lightning uh, speed of light, and that can also be handy uh, covering uh, open um, um, uh, gaps that you can uh, that are too wide to jump over, like crevices. Uh, with whirlwind sprint, you often can. Uh, uh yeah just sprints uh in a fraction of a second to the other side because there's not really gravity while you're uh, in that one or two seconds of uh super speed uh so that were the shouts then we have powers yeah i think powers is more like the race that you uh choose and you can get like a power and my power i'm a north i choose to the north race that's just like a regular dude this is who i am uh their power is apparently battle cry an active effect is what you um uh yeah the, your your physical um, condition i'm warm if you're cold you can also die but we are now warm so that's good uh it also has some uh some uh, uh, positive uh attributes to it like picking locks and picking pockets is easier blah blah i'm a uh, refreshed so i'm not tired i'm well fed ancient knowledge that's from a, 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 some kind of uh quest where we got a lexicon lexicon and it gives a little bonus when wearing dwarven armor archery that's uh i i enchanted some of my clothing uh also my guard helmet and now the bow does more damage. Uh, leather boots. I enchanted it to be able to carry more. Uh, necklace. Uh, some uh, elem, uh, items you don't need to enchant. They simply are magical by themselves. Uh, that might be this one. Uh, uh, enhancing smithing abilities. Uh, this one as well. Smithing. I. That's like uh, a necklace, a ring, fur bracers um and i have twice fur bracers that's a bit weird anyways i have a lot of stuff here with uh improving smithing that's probably because i was in solitude near the uh the iron smith and then if you uh, equip all this clothing you can actually um your re resulting uh enchantment or whatever you create uh, or uh, actually what you create is is more uh, has better attributes so that's why um, I uh, probably have all this equipped um, I have my Nord blood gives uh, a bit of resistance to cold environments uh, and also resistance to frost so that's related to my uh, yeah character type that I chose the Nord and the lover stone there are stones in the world you can activate it and then you can you can get uh, a certain buff and i, I currently have the lover stone active which improves uh, all skills 15 percent quicker so that is about all the magic then we have the map you already saw it we have five big cities solitude over there to the left we have markers here we have dawnstar near the coast so that's three we actually have more cities 
Here we have Mortal, then we have Falkreath down to the south, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, this is the capital, right run over there. And there are absolutely more cities than only five. This was Dawnstar. This is the um, <coughs> the um, Mages College is over here. College of Winterhold in the city of Winterhold. Here you have Windhelm. It's more of like a trading city. And here we have Riften um, all the way to the southeast. And it's really cool that all these yeah, I forgot how you call it, like, um, yeah, let's call it a county, but it has a different name in Skyrim's world. Like whatever the Jarl presides over, all these main cities, um, they all have like pretty different uh, flora and fauna. Here it's really foresty, like pine uh, wood forest. Here it's really like more autumn like uh this is like like um yeah those steam fountains like rocky uh, rockiness with those those uh that really hot water spouting from the ground this is of course all wintry um near winter hold and wind home is wintry environments here we have the tundras, or the, like the, the flatlands uh, near White Run. Um, here you have like yeah, more like mountainous, uh, hilly uh, environments near Markert. And here we are in a coastal city on the uh, border between like like winter and um, yeah, pretty okay uh, weather. And so that's the map. And last thing i will show is the items uh you have weapons currently not that much equipped uh, clothing from um, uh, crowns to amulets to boots um, i have quite a lot this is all that's that smithing stuff that i have uh, uh, equipped everything with a little arrow in it is what i have equipped um, yeah, there's quite a lot. Legendary, you can upgrade your your uh, items and legendary is the um, highest level. And that increases your, your the, 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 the stats of the um, item. For instance, the armor and the warmth and the weight and the value. Potions, um, you can take them. You have potions, po poisons to for instance uh, put poison on your arrow to dish out some additional damage and you have potions for instance to become invisible or to cure your disease scrolls yeah this is also uh yeah the, uh, the magical squirrels you can uh, cast a spell with them for instance creature and people up to level 12 won't fight uh or scroll to arms uh, you can uh, have a target get um, uh, give uh, improved combat skills that is of course pretty close to just your um for instance conjuration spells that you already have uh, uh in the character itself but you, yeah, you don't need to have those spells unlocked you can also just find it in a scroll and have the same effect then food we do need to eat uh, because we're playing not on the survival mode. Uh, ingredients. This is for the alchemy to, to uh, create potions and poisons. Um, uh, you, you, for each item in the world that you see here, all the ingredients, you learn its attributes by combining them. And if both uh, have like this, the same uh, attributes, uh, in uh, a potion, for instance, you take three ingredients, two have the same attribute. I think then uh, it will uh, pop up uh, as a known attribute. For instance, here in the Hagrave on Feathers, you have Damage Magica. I already discovered it. Fortify Conjuration discovered it. Frenzy discovered it. There's still one unknown attribute. And I will have to uh, discover that by simply uh, mixing it up with others and hopefully... Um, uh, mixing it up with one that uh, has that same attribute and then it will 
uh, become uh, uh, cleared. Books. There are enchantment books which give you a little bonus and also just cool books with um, uh, stories uh, or, or, or descriptions of the uh, area you're in. And you also have spell tomes and spell tomes you um, must obtain to be able to uh, unlock these spells you have here. For instance, Flame Cloak. I had to buy the um, spell tome for Flame Cloak and then it got uh, added to my arsenal. Uh, keys, yeah, for several um, uh, buildings and stuff, you, you um, uh, need keys. Uh, which apparently stay in your inventory, but I don't think they weigh anything, so that doesn't matter that much. We do have like limited carry weight. We have now a max of 275. I can also, um, for instance, sometimes weapons or armor can be quite heavy. Uh, for instance, this one is uh, 16 in weight. I can also trade stuff with uh, our companion, which is Lydia. And the dog I have with me, where's Lydia? Lydia, where the hell are you? Here she is. Um, I'm right behind you. Here, I can trade stuff with her. You? I think I already gave her stuff. Let's see what she has. Yes, she's also pretty full with stuff, which I just couldn't carry anymore because it exceeded my uh, uh, carry weight. So uh, yeah, we share the burden, so to say. Um, and that was about the carry weight, the keys. Then we also have like miscellaneous items. These are the soul gems to store souls in that you need to enchant items. Yeah, and there's uh, dragon bones uh, that you can just sell those. Um, yeah, and for, uh, yeah, a lot of rubies and diamonds that's also handy for uh, selling. This is a quest, those stones of Baron Zaya. They are scattered around the world. I just need to find all 24 of them. I only have 16 uh, currently. The Black Star that uh, holds unlimited um, uh, souls. Uh, as opposed to, for instance, a Black Soul Gem. After you fill it and you use it to enchant it. I do think it gets destroyed. Um, and the Torch for Dark uh, Dungeons. And that is pretty much it. You also have like this hotkey like this uh, quick select uh, menu over there um, that is about it and I've also been talking a lot it's a super boring episode I understand but it was also really good for myself to get into this game it was a year since I uh, last booted it up <coughs> so I am pretty much good to go um to get into the roads and we will be doing that uh acquire the balmora blue to uh it's pretty funny to frame some kind of dude it's a bit sneaky to frame someone but yeah it is what it is and also let's just check what that um man i already did quite some stuff check it out i found 360 5000 gold already um, all right, these are my stats. So we'll check that later on. Almost killed thousand people. God damn it! Spells learned, crafting, crime. I try to be a good guy, but yeah, from my stat, it's uh, not really apparent. But let's see what. Um, that's you can actually invest in stores as well pretty funny let's see what that highest difficulty is called by the way these are the oh no i don't want this or so i do it yeah these are the mods open face guard helmets enhanced blood for a bit more blood and no mamaria sky my own mods if you like it you can get it on the uh, skyrim nexus um settings I won't be changing a lot here because I actually changed the config files with uh, further draw distances and I don't think I put them to read only or maybe I did. I don't want it to revert to default. Ah, it's called master, I think. The uh, highest difficulty level. 
Uh, let's check that out. Experts, adapt, apprentice, novice. Yes. Ah, no, there's also legendary. Ah, now I remember. I didn't do legendary because that really, it, it's simply, normally I'm really like uh, f uh, fully for the highest difficulty, but in this game, it's simply enemies become incredibly um, tiring to become bullet sponges or they, yeah, they, they have like simply retarded a lot of damage. You hardly chip anything away if you hit them with full force. So it just, it, it draws everything out without yeah, more skill required. So it's it's just, it, it's, it's not a, in my book, not a fun setting. So I dialed it down one notch to uh, master. Um, I think that's about it. Let's check out the audio, voice, music, display. Hot is off. Everything else is maxed and stuff. Depth of field. That's all pretty fine. Controls. Yeah, that's all pretty basic. All right, guys. Um, I am eating that. Oh, shit. Why did he stand up? I want to eat this piece of... That's the only hard thing without... Um, um, a cross air or uh, a pointer sometimes picking stuff up then you can just as well pick up the plate instead of the fish but to uh, celebrate this introductory episode of the Skyrim uh, special edition <coughs> playthrough let's eat a bit of fine salmon very nice here we go thank you very much and guys i will not ask i hope you enjoyed because this was the most boring probably ever it was also more for myself to just get to grips with the game again i will publish it why not uh, in the next episode we really will uh, start the adventure with first framing that dude out in solitude guys hope yeah now i won't ask i hope you enjoyed but hope to see you in that next one I promise it will be uh, more uh, more action. And for the meantime, guys, do not forget to always keep on gaming. See you later.